Tis the season to believe. We've been talking about this is the season. I started by talking about this is the season of a peace. But how can you know peace if you don't know the God of peace? We tend to have peace in the circumstances. And when the circumstance change, it changes our peace. I don't want you to have that. I want you to have something that never changes. A God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever more. We, we, we started talking about this is the season of favor. Somebody say favor. Yes, yes. And we, we said the definition of favor was God's ability or grace to do that which would be impossible without God. God will do it. He's given you favor to do something that could only be done by God. He says, I put it on you. I put favor on you. There's something in you that God has given you that is, it's, 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 it's so powerful that the enemy brings fear against you so you don't recognize your favor. And, and if you are not dealing with any fear, then I wonder if you have any favor. Because wherever there is favor, there is the power of God, there is the potential of God, there is the ability of God, and the enemy comes to attack you. See, the reason that some of us have been, were attacked as children is because of the favor, the call that was on you. The enemy had to launch an assault against you. And he's still doing it. And, and don't think that if you leave him alone, he'll leave you alone. Nah, nah, nah. The only reason he'll leave you alone is because you're not trying to do anything for the Lord. He'll only, he'll only stop attacking you. He'll let you do what you're doing if what you're doing is in alignment with what he's doing. And so he'll leave you alone because you're going down the wrong road. And he said, keep going. He encourages you. Oh, you got high last time. Get higher. You got toe up on the floor up, from the floor up. Yeah, he said, yeah, 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 yeah. Do that, do that, do that. But I need you to know, today I want to talk about this is the season to believe. Do I have any believers out here? Come on, let me see it again. Do I have any believers out here? If you really believe, just wave at me. Get, get vehement with this thing. Get, you're at home. I know you're at home. Just wave. Wave your hands in the air like you just don't. I believe. I, let your kids see you in there tomorrow. I believe, God. Yes. Man, I hope so. I hope so. Because the things that God wants to do for you are so wonderful. They are greater than what you can think or imagine. But God says, I got to come back to you. Because it will be done unto you according to your faith. You got to have it, y'all. You have to have faith. But you can't just have it. You got to work it. Everybody say work it. You have to work it. Now, some of you think that you're working it because uh, you, you are journaling about it. Uh, you're praying about it. You got your vision board about it, but you're not working it. You can shimmy, you can shake, you can speak in tongues, but you need to work it. What is working it? God says, when I give you something to do, I'm going to give you word to align yourself with. So you may have an ought against your brother, but you ain't talking to him. And God is saying, I can't bless you until you go over there and get that right. But you got your vision board. You got all these things. But the practical things that you have to do according to the word, he says, that's what I'm, I'm basing it upon. So if you're praying for increase, but you're not working like you're, you're expecting increase, 
then you probably are frustrated because you're not working it. If you're praying for a better relationship uh, and you're not willing to forgive and forget and let go and start again, you just want to pray about it, but you don't want to be about it. You're not working it. The devil is glad that you're frustrated and you're and things are falling apart. And he says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, then they will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and heal their lands. Y'all stop there and not doing the work. You say, I'm praying. No, you can't just pray about it. Somebody said, be about it. Yeah. I'm not talking to your neighbor. I'm talking to you. But I'm also talking to me because it's easier said. Yeah, even for the preacher. If you look with me in the book of Luke, look with me at Luke 1, verse 37, 38, and 45. While you're turning there, we were talking um, last week about the birth of Jesus. We know that, that we talked about a parallelism that Luke starts out looking at John being born to Zacharias and Elizabeth. And he talks about Mary being impregnated. And it says, I'll, I'll paraphrase it and then I'll ask for the scripture in a second. He paraphrases and, and says that, that Zacharias is the high priest. He goes into the Holy of Holies, has an encounter with God. God tells him you're going to have a son. Elizabeth, his wife, is old, 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 old. She's real old. She's so old that she has given up thinking that her womb would generate any children. And she's lived under the curse and, and the social, being a social outcast, even though she's the high priest wife. Sometimes we think because we are favored and because God has put us in position that maybe we shouldn't have any problems. But listen, the greater the call, the greater the cause, the greater the problem. And, and when God gives you great favor, there'll be great attacks. When he gives you little favor, there'll be little attacks. But it's commensurate with what he called you to do. And everybody in this life shall have tribulations and troubles. So we find that Elizabeth is, is uh, given a message from the Lord and, and her husband refuses to believe it. He says, how can this be looking at the situation? He says, no way. It's been too much has happened. You ever felt like that? Like too much has gone on. We can't recover from this. Too much has happened. We've had too many failures. But I come to let you know today that it ain't over until God says it's over. When do you know it's over? Either he takes you out or he takes them out. That's when it's over. That's when it's over. When I say take them out, brings them off of this earth. Doesn't mean that you ain't talking to them and socializing with them. You could still be doing that, but it's over when death comes. There's no opportunity to do over after that. But until then, there's still opportunity for God to move. So we find out that in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, she gets pregnant. The sixth month, the angel Gabriel goes down and sees Mary. She's in uh, uh, Nazareth. And he says, Mary, you found favor with God. And uh, then he, I'm paraphrasing, and then he goes on and says, this thing that's going to come upon you is the Holy Spirit is going to do it. And I just need you to be willing to say yes is basically what it says. But he also says, uh, uh, don't be afraid. Because of that favor, he says, watch out for the fear. Look at verse number 37, 38. 37 first and then 38, thank you. It says, the angel has told her, don't be afraid. And he also says to her, Elizabeth, the one that was barren, is now pregnant. And then he says, no word from God will ever fail. Isn't that good to know? In verse 38, he says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Verse 45. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord 
would fulfill his promise to her. The question is, do you believe what God has said to you? Has, has anybody got a word from the Lord where you, you heard it in your spirit? Somebody may have prophesied it to you and you held on to it as your word. That word that God gave you, you have to say yes to the word. That word was a promise from God. And, and, and God's promises never fail. The problem is God's promise don't come when we want them to. It seems to take God a long time to get to us what he has already called for us. And what we don't understand is God is positioning us. He's allowing us to get ready for the blessing that he's going to give us. And many times God says, I can't take you higher until I see how you operate at the low level. God says, I can't take you higher until I see how you operate. Elder uh, um, Hunter said, hey, you think you'll tithe over much? Not if you're not doing over little. But when you start changing your perspective of the tithe, in order to tithe over much more, I got to get. Man, I, that's why I said, Lord, bless me to tithe here. I understood that the more I got, the more I would give. But who wouldn't serve a God that says, I'm going to give you a hundred some 30, some 60, some 100 fold increase and you say, man, I can't give you a tenth of our increase and that's all you tithe on is increase. I don't even know, I, I don't have a tithing message. It's about believing, but it's about believing in every area of your life and, and I need you to hold on to that thing that God promised you, that word you got because his promises never fail his promises never fail but you've got to do what Mary did Mary said let it be done according to your word in other words she says I believe notice if you will Zacharias heard the word from the angel Gabriel and he said how can this happen? Or he said, I'm looking at the situation and he says, this can't happen. Mary gets a word from the Lord and she says, how can this be? That's not the same thing. One of them says, I don't think this can be. When I look at how old my wife is and how old I am, I don't think it can be. And notice it's the priest that's saying, I don't think it can be. But I heard somewhere that we are saved and we believe, but sometimes we have to pray, God, help my unbelief. So you are a believer. You're, you confess with your mouth. You believed in, in your heart on the Lord Jesus and you are saved, so you, are, you have enough belief to believe in the virgin birth, burial, and resurrection, but you don't have enough belief to hold on to what God said. He already has power over life and death. You think he don't have power over your getting a house or your healing or the things you're believing him for? So sometimes we say we believe, but we take too much time considering the circumstances stop considering the facts stop considering the facts continue to continue con continue to consider your faith stop considering the facts stop listening to what people say to you who can't imagine how God could use you one of the things I need you to know is that I don't want you to just believe in you. I don't want you to believe just in you. It's in him that we live. It's in him that we move. It's in him that we have our very being. Do you know that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, 
old things are passed away. Since I'm now in Christ, I have to stop looking at the limitations that I got from my parents, my biological parents, because now I got a new daddy. Abba Father is my daddy, and now I'm seated together with Christ in heavenly places. There is access available to me as a son of the Most High God. I am now royalty. I'm the child of a king. But you've got, to, you've got to get that in your mind to where you're not allowing anything to make you look at the flesh. you got to look through eyes of faith. you got to look through eyes of faith. And, and we, we find out that the Bible says to Mary in verse number 36, pull 36, it says, Behold. Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. It says, and I love verse 37. He says, nothing that God promises will fail. Nothing is impossible with God. And what I need you to understand, if you are really a believer... If you're a really believer, you're going to have to change your perspective of who you are in him. You're going to have to change your perspective of the circumstances. Is there anything too hard for God? I'm talking to the believers. I'm talking to the believers. This is the season to believe that there is nothing too hard. Some of us are doing like Mary. We're considering uh, you're from Nazareth. You're from Creekwood. You're from Houston Moore. You're from this place or you're from that place. You are from that place. You are from that area. But you are now a new creation in Christ. And now you've got to begin to look at every through the lens of God's power. You've got to begin to look at yourself. And, 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 and what you have to do is you have to raise your self-esteem. Why? Because you are still looking at where you physically came from. You have yet to accept who you are now in the beloved of Christ. So now you got to change and, and stop thinking, I'm, I'm, I only went to this level of education. I only make this level of financial increase. I only, I only have been exposed to this as far as social and economic background. No, no, no. You've got to raise your self-esteem. So what is happening to most of us, we're trying to believe God, but we still remembering all of our faults, all of our failures, all the things you planned to do, you did, you, it got messed up, but you're still sitting there saying, I did the crime, I can do the time, and God says, stop doing the time, I already paid for that. But you still doing the time because you got a sense of it's right is right and wrong is wrong. Man of God, woman of God. That's what the enemy wants. He don't want you to get an image of who you are in the spirit realm. Who you are. And, 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 and somebody say this, I like me. Oh, some of y'all couldn't even say that. You don't really like you because you know. You got some stuff. Somebody say it again. I like me. I, like me. Oh, I got one or two of y'all, but not. Mm, mm, over here. Y'all be quiet. I just, so, if you really feel it. Somebody say, I like me. I like me. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here. I like me. I, like me. Mm, I don't know. See what the enemy is saying. That don't even feel right, does it? For some of us, it's like. I got too much stuff. I'm, I'm all jacked. 
And you're talking about say I like me? Yes, because what you're jacked up about is already paid for. That's the old man. You are a new creation. I'm coming from somebody over. Y'all get the chance. Come on. I like, me. I like me. Yes. See, because when you raise your self-esteem of who you are, and don't think I'm getting carnal, because he says we ought not think more highly of ourselves than we should. But we recognize as a man thinketh, so is he. If you don't like you, how in the world you expect anybody else to like you? If you don't think you can do anything, how do you think I'm, you think I should turn something over to you and you don't think you can do it? Ah, the devil's a whole lie. I ain't giving you nothing. But you got to understand that you raise your self-esteem, it's not about believing in you. Ha! If it was talking about believing in you, you could never do it. You are only limited to what you could do. And it doesn't matter what position you are in, priest, Zacharias, ghetto girl, pregnant out of wedlock, but what she says is, how can this be? And then she says, God, I trust you. Be it unto me. But one of the things I need you to know is that just as the angel told Mary to consider or see, he, he says, I'm going to tell you something that's miraculous so you can believe that God can do the miraculous in your life. Elizabeth. She's pregnant already. She's in her six months. She's real pregnant. <laughs> I don't know if there's such a thing as being a little pregnant. But you have to change your perspective of the circumstances, of the situations. Listen, God is saying, if you really believe, don't get caught up on what you see. Don't get caught up on what you feel. Don't get caught up on your failures. Don't get caught up on your setbacks. Don't get caught up on your history. You are a new creature. So that's why you could, if I looked at all the filthy, nasty, low down, dirty things You've done, not me, I'm not talking about me. <laughs> I ain't talking about me, I'm talking about you. It applies to me, but I, I feel better talking about your stuff. Because y'all just think I'm talking about my stuff. But I'm talking about all of our stuff. And, and God says, listen, I need you to consider this thing differently. I need you to consider it differently. He, he says, I need you to understand it's a perspective thing. It's a mindset thing. It's, you say you believe, but you got the wrong mindset about believing. You think that you're just supposed to believe in your ability. Stop it. Stop it. You can't believe just in your ability to get his blessings. He says, because if you only believe in your ability, you bring in your flesh before me. And he says, no, I don't choose the mighty. I don't choose the ones that are vaulted and lifted up. I choose the simple, the weak, the, the minor things. Why? Because God says, I want glory out of your life. Now, I can give you a gift, and it came from me. That's why he says, you're over there looking at the gift, and you forgot about the giver. And he's saying, I need you to change your mindset about what it is that I promised you. You said, well, God, you, you promised me a child, but I've had uh, a miscarriage. He says, my promises are yes and amen. At what point do you release your faith and say, I got to do this on my own? God recognizes that we've got to have a change of mindset, a change of paradigm, a change of perspective. And, and, and we got to know that God is trying to get us to tap into the spirit realm. Understand the promises of God that are written down in 66 books. And then begin to apprehend these promises that are on your life. 
but you can't do it unless you change your mindset about who you are in Christ. And here's the thing. The mind, uh, he says, uh, man's heart is evil and wicked and no one can know it. But he also tells us, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And we understand the battle is for the mind. And here's where it goes down to. He says, I need you to know that I'm doing a new thing on the inside of you. In fact, if you get the inside right, the outside will be right. He says, I need you to uh, uh, um, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge me and I will direct your path. He says, I need you to get a new perspective of who I am and who you are in me. So now it doesn't matter what you cannot do. God can. But you have to change the way you see you by changing the way you see him. He says, you've got to change your mindset. He, in other words, we recognize the man's heart is the mind. It's the center of man. But the mind also is uh, conscious and subconscious. Do you know that your subconscious mind is where the data bank of all of your experiences, all of your emotions, all of your failures, all of your setbacks, all of the, the things you've experienced, the thing that mama told you as a little bitty kid, all of that stuff is in there. Over four billion bits of information is calculated every second, according to what I read, in the subconscious mind. It's it's, it's the data bank of information. But interesting, even though your subconscious is powerful, it doesn't make decisions. It just carries them out. So we understand that my conscious mind makes the decision. My subconscious carries it out. In fact, my subconscious is carrying out previous decisions because it sets up patterns. In other words, if you tell me to turn on, if I hit the O-N switch on a device, it starts chain reaction to other things to get the equipment turned on. In your subconscious, your subconscious mind is already programmed to where if you say fear, then it automatically starts magnifying things. It, it causes you to hear differently. You know, fight or flight, it causes your blood pressure to rise. It causes anxiety to build up automatically. It's responding to what you said. Come on, somebody. I need you to understand that you've got to begin to reprogram your thinking. But you've got to start declaring what God says and standing on it and until your body begins to uh, 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 change the way that it responds to what you're requiring of it. God is saying, I don't want you to conform. I need you to now transform. I need you to say something different to get something different. So when I said to you, uh, uh, say I like me, you're not used to saying that. Because there's too many things about you that are not likable. That you know that you've been rehearsing all your life. But now we recognize that this new information about who God is, it changes what I think I can do. And if I know that I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me, I begin to look at everything as possible. And I'm no longer moved by uh, uh, what I see because I recognize as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In other words, whatever I believe will become my reality. My belief will impact my behavior. My belief will cause me to make decisions differently now that I'm in Christ than I did before. My belief now says, me plus God is the majority. Whoever is standing against me, they're going down. 
Now, but you got to say it when it don't look like it. You got to say it, and, and even though you don't feel it, but you got to keep on saying it because you got to get it down into your subconscious mind. When you say, I'm not going to let this rob me of my peace, instead of fretting and worrying, all of a sudden your subconscious mind says, she got, she got peace. I got peace in this thing. It starts saying blood pressure, come on down. Anxiety, come down. He's not, what used to trip you up, don't trip you up no more. Mama said, smack the taste out your mouth. But now I said, you're blessed. You're more blessed than you know. You know, you don't, you don't even go into all of that. You said, <laughs> you don't even know how blessed you are today. God is on your side. He loves you. He loves you greatly. God is trying to show us something. He's saying, listen, I, I'm, if you believe, I, I need you to get something you believe in God for and really start activating this word on it. Bringing, bringing every one of your proclivities into subjection, every thought into subjection of the spirit of God. That means you don't do what you feel, you do what you know. What he said, and he says, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make all grace abound towards you. So whatever you need, when you need, I got you. But you have to raise your esteem, your self-esteem about who you are. I don't care where you're from. You're the only one that cares about that. So you keep trying to add things to, to where you are acceptable uh, uh, from people who don't. You think they care about you? They ain't even thinking about you. You are thinking about them. You see yourself as a grasshopper in somebody else's eyes. Because you know you got your GED. If nobody would know if you stopped telling them. You, you, you think that people won't accept you because you were strung out and messed up. You're the one that keep talking. That was 20 years ago. Why are you still living that? Here's this girl, Mary, she's saying, Lord, how do I, how do I get this favor? But one of the things you got to know, Mary wasn't afraid of the angel. She was afraid of what he said, which means that Mary had a relationship with God. She had a relationship with God. You cannot do this apart from him. And, 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 and some of us, we, the reason that we can be in church all these years but don't know God is because you got religion and no relationship. Because you keep on trying to do it in your flesh and God has to sometimes get you to where you don't work yourself around every one of the hurdles that God has allowed to be in your life and nothing has caused you to turn to God because you are so gifted and so talented that God has to take you to a place. Your gift, your talents, your money, your education, nothing. Do you believe? Do you believe? I'm talking about where your kids are. Do you believe where your finances are? Do you believe that God can, can take away that addiction? I got folks in here, you don't even know who you're sitting by. You don't even know who you're sitting next to. You don't know what people have gone through or going through, but you keep on disqualifying you because of what you know about you. you good thing you don't know my story. Huh? Anybody can say, I thank God they don't know my story. Because you would do to me the same thing you're doing to yourself. And you say you're a believer. You're one of those sunshine believers. Elder Hunter gives me a hard time because I got a different standard about how many teams I can have and when I can ride with them. If they're winning, I like to ride with them. They start losing, Lonnie, they can be replaced. I'll call it what you want. I get to choose my teams the way I want to. 
He don't like the fact that I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. Unless they start really getting way behind. They start getting way behind and be like, oh, Lord. They win, they lose two or three games in a row, and they're out of the hunt. I got to find me somebody else. I'm a winner. <laughs> God wants you to know you got to change. You got to change the way you think. He says, if you are really a believer, you got to. He says, I can't do it unless you come in agreement with me. What is it that he's trying to do in your life? He says, I'm trying to get you to come into agreement with me. Look at Philippians 4, verse 9, 13, and 19. He says, I'm, see, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get somebody to walk out of here today differently. You think it's all right for Elder Hunter to stand up here? I don't know, man, why am I talking about you so much today? Isn't he doing a great job? Give the Lord a hand praise for him. I might even take up an offering. Everybody just got a dime. We're going to get y'all to line up after service and give him one. <laughs> Philippians, I just need to raise your level of belief. Come on, Aaron. Here's the key. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, says Paul, or seen in me, follow me as I follow him, Put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. He says, hold on to what I gave you. You say, Pastor Campbell, we've seen you build. You, we've seen these things work. I say, as Paul say, whatever you've learned, Whatever you have heard in this ministry, and I've been preaching it for 18 years, and this young man and this young woman stand up and say, you know, we're buying our third house. Some of y'all, okay, it's too wonderful for you, but you, you, you think some folks will get jealous. Can you imagine? And, and look, don't you know you can't get what I got unless I expose you to what I have? If, I don't know if you want a poor, busted, disgusted preacher, but I'm trying not to be him. I don't want to be him. If God can do exceedingly and abundantly, I want the abundance of God on my life. And what I'm saying to you, whether it relates to your children, your finances, your marriage, your, your friendships, Remember what you've learned. Put it into practice. Start following me as I follow him. When I move, you move. Yeah. You be like, hey, whoa, let go pastor. He believe in God to do exceedingly and abundantly. Elder Hunter, Lex got it. First lady got it. Tammy got it. Who's next? Sean's got it. Yes. Yeah, man. Yes, woman of God. Give me Philippians, that next verse, Aaron. Thank you so much. This is the thing. It doesn't say God can do all things through you. It says I can do all things through him. Thank you, Aaron. Give me that last verse. And because God is saying, I need you to come into agreement with what I'm doing, what my promises are. He says, and my God will meet all of your, he says all. In the Greek, all means what? In the Hebrew, all means what? In English, so God is saying, God Almighty, I can do everything according to his riches of his glory in Christ. 
See, this is the thing. So many of us, we say we believe, but we don't act like it. And God is saying, listen, when you do believe and you come in alignment with me, I can do all things. But it's not just praying about it. It's not just fasting about it. It's not just talking about it. You now got to work it. What do you mean, Pastor? When things are not working out well, which they will, because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And watch this. Anything that is not of faith is sin. Whoa, whoa. Anything that's not of faith is sin. See, the reason that's important is we want a moral list of the do's and the don'ts. That's the law. The law doesn't give liberty. The law kills. So many of us, we say that we're walking in faith, but we're trying to keep the law. We're trying to do what we can limit it do, and we're saying that's the standard. That's why some of you all, uh, some of y'all don't need to come to church because you ain't that bad. Some of us say, I would pray, but I, I got this, God. But wait a minute, what did he say? Men ought to always pray and faint not. What, what always praying puts your dependence on God. It makes you dependent on him, especially since he's the one that's doing it. He says, you tap into me and then I'll do it. Now, he didn't say, I'm going to do it and then convince you to come in alignment with it. He has said that, but in this passage, Paul is saying, I need you to be able to say, I can do it through Christ. But if you are saying, like many of us, I can do it because I'm talented. I can do it because I have the finances. I can do it because I think I got the finances, but God wants me to tithe to the church. But the church ain't doing what I think the church should be doing. So I'm going to take the tithe and I will go do what I want to do with it. God knows my heart. You don't know the word. He said, bring all the tithe into the house. Now, I don't know what, I'm not taking up an extra offering. It ain't about that. But I need you to understand that God wants us to submit to this word and do it his way. You may think we shouldn't have blood for uh, perpetuation, perpetuation of forgiveness of sin. But that's what God chose. Life is in the blood. You may say, well, why? We got I don't know. His ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. He chose blood is blood. He says, I'm going to give you a hundred and then give you a chance to give back to me. It's the way I said I want to know where your heart is. He's saying to us, I need you to understand that I got to think differently. I love this, man. My faith is raising so much. I'm, you, do you have an expectancy of God's goodness to come over you? Because I... I know I'm favored. I know, God, you are too. You just got to know what it is and then begin to apply this word to whatever it is. And then you have to have an expectancy. See, I can wait when I know my daddy is coming to pick me up. And he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. I can wait in the midst of the storm. People are riding around the school and picking up their kids, asking me if I want to ride. No, daddy is coming. I'm trying to tell you your daddy is coming. He's trying to tell us something. Looking at Mary, looking at Zacharias, they both looked at the same kind of situation. One looked at their circumstances. The other one looked at his power. What are you focusing on? Give me Hebrews chapter 3, 
verse 12 through 15. And I'll wrap up. Y'all give me 10 minutes, I'll give you back two. He says, I need you to beware. Least there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Stop there for a second. Look here. See, sin and fear are the enemies of your favor and your belief. The heart of unbelief. The heart of unbelief. And, and this is what's important. Anything that is not Faith is sin. It's the heart condition. You can do the right things in your heart and mind be nowhere even close to God. That's why he doesn't look at your hands. He looks at your heart. And he says man's heart is evil and wicked. You can't even know it, but you can see the fruit of it. And he says, I, I need you to be aware. Be aware Least anyone come and deceive you and tell you this, this thing that you're doing, this thing that you're believing, it will not work. You have to understand that God wants to make you unstoppable in the things he's called you to be, in the things he's called you to do. I can tell you I have an unstoppable faith. What about you? What are you? What What does your faith stop at? If I know that God is able to make all grace abound, that I'm seated with Him, everything is possible. I'm dreaming bigger dreams. I'm believing for my wife. I'm believing for my kid. And. And it's like this, y'all. Some areas are high. Some areas are low. Some areas are in. Some are out. I still have to have the same faith for those things that are not working as I do for the things that are. And then I've got to stand in him until the situation stands up. God wants to make you unstoppable. Give me that next verse, Aaron. Thank you so much. He wants to... He says, encourage, add encouragement to one another daily. Because today I may very well encourage Lex, but because I'm encouraging her, when she see me going through, she can encourage me, put courage into me. He says, while it's called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Unbelief. Unbelief causes us to do our own thing. He says, "Give me, thank you, Aaron. I see you're trying to keep up with me. Thank you, you're doing so good. He says, we have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original convictions firmly to the very end. Some of you all been in church all your life, but that's all you've been. Come on, man. Come on, woman of God. Being in church is not enough. Somebody say, I want more. Y'all don't even sound like, stop it. Stop it. This, that, that, that's the reset. Stop it. I'm talking about God making you unstoppable. What are you talking about, Pastor Campbell? Everything. I'm telling you, God making you unstoppable. God has the power. Your problem is you don't believe. Not enough to do it. Not enough to do it. Elder Hunter told you today where he was, but you seen one clip of 18 years that I know of. But he's got to also deal with the, the 22 years that he know of. 
that's in that subconscious mind. That, that comes to attack him every time God wants to elevate him. He says, I'm not worthy. Do you know that the house I grew up in 20, 40 years ago today sold for $5,000? I don't even want to see the house. I don't want to see that. You ever gone back to where you grew up and you said, oh, Lord, I didn't know I was that bad off. The streets are narrower. Everything is dirtier. You know, I don't know about you. I'm talking about me on this one. But God is saying, I need you to be a believer, the kind that, the kind that speaks to situations, the kind that stands on God's word, the kind that declares decrees and stands until it manifests, the, the kind that'll get you up after being knocked down. And brother and sister, you will be knocked down. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You going down, but you go down in the flesh, get up in faith, and declare, I'm unstoppable. That's what God wants from us, unstoppable. Yes, I'm going to have some failures. Yes, 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 I I'm dealing with some stuff. Yes, you're not. Yeah, you are, but you can be unstoppable because you remember, I don't believe in me. God is tired of you believing in you. That's the problem. And, and because you financially, you're so secure, you're just smug in yourself. I was saying raise your self-esteem for those of us who may not. We're in the same place, y'all. She thinks she's something because she got money. I think I'm something because I got God. <laughs> I think I'm something because I'm, uh, I'm wonderfully, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, you are looking at a masterpiece. Is that too arrogant for some of y'all? See, arrogance is a having a puffed up sense of something. Hot air. I'm talking facts, baby. I'm talking facts. I'm talking facts. And that's what he said. I'm saying what he said. He says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm his own masterpiece. I'm not trying to be like you. I'm the best me I can be. Y'all may not like me, but you don't know how much he loves me. And I am the beloved. That's why I'm on. Yeah, Zay, go ahead. Start playing. I heard you. I heard you. That'll help me wrap up. I need you to know. It's not enough to be in church, y'all. Come on, we got to move beyond that. That's just the starting place. When are you going to activate this thing called faith in your life? And you need to do it. You need to do it before it becomes the only thing left. That's what we wait for. You're going to have problems with or without God. I choose to go with. I choose to go with. See, because sometimes when I don't even know what to even pray for, the Holy Spirit, the things that are, I can't even utter, he makes intercession for me. He, he, he tells me, That if I'm in him, I can do all things. He lets me know. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Somebody say unstoppable. Mm. I don't care what you're facing. Stand to your feet. I, I need you to activate your faith on this thing. 
Stop being moved by what you feel, what you see. God is not a respecter of person. I was telling somebody yesterday that was dealing with their husband in addiction, in sin, not choosing, so wrapped up into whatever he's wrapped up into. And that story can be repeated almost for every one of us. Every one of us. Every one of us. Every one of us got a kid, got a relationship, got a situation, got a circumstance. And the enemy keeps trying to tell you you're less than because of what you're going through. There is no temptation, but such is common to man. And with all of them, he'll provide a way of escape. But what you're going through is common. But God said, If you abide in me and my word abide in you, it's the beginning of making you unstoppable. Some of y'all are about ready to give up right now. I declare and decree that you are unstoppable. But it's up to you. Nothing can stop you. But you're the only, you're the, the devil can't stop you. He has to convince you to stop. He has to scare you out. He has to use fear to cause you to abort the favor on your life. Anybody believe they're unstoppable? They say it real loud. Unstoppable! unstoppable. Mm. I need you to think about whatever it is you're dealing with. I don't know what it is. You know what it is. You know what it is. But we need a war cry. We need a war cry. You got to decree it to yourself. You can't just come in and get you a pancake word this morning. I don't want you to go out of here the same way. You've got to be a warrior in the spirit. If you believe that the enemy, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Somebody shout, I'm unstoppable. Say it again, I'm unstoppable.